Today, I want to talk to you about the gift of self-accountability. Uh, this is something that's really important in our decluttering journey, but not a lot of people really give it a lot of thought. So there's something that I see over and over and over again that can really trip people up in their decluttering journey. And it's the idea that in order to be successful in the process, they need other people to push them to do things. Or if they share space with somebody, they need that person on board with them to declutter as well. Okay, and the reality is that isn't always the case. It doesn't always work out that way. And if they don't have both of those things, or one or both of those things, uh, they give up on the process after they barely started. Okay, and this can be, can turn itself kind of like into a cycle. We're like, okay, my spouse, my roommate, my kids, they were on board, things were going great. And then, you know, people just started not pulling their weight or they started not picking up after themselves, we get resentful, we start to shut down, we stop decluttering ourselves. And then any of the areas or zones that we conquered, the clutter starts to build back in again. So is it easier if someone is there cheering us on and always helping us out? Like, absolutely, right? But that isn't always our reality. And that means that we may have to adjust our thinking. So it's super important for you to think about embracing the idea of self-accountability. And I'm not saying that it's easy, okay? I know some people would be like, oh my gosh, Selena, you know, if I could just be accountable to myself, I'd have, you know, a different career. I would have been better in school. I would have done all these other things. But I'm a big believer that it's never too late to learn a new skill set to undo some of the programming and the beliefs that we have about ourselves and the way that we move through the world and make these tiny shifts and changes in a way that it better serves us. We can get into a rut waiting for other people to notice what we've done, to waiting for other people to help us out in our decluttering, to the point that we start falling off the wagon ourselves when our needs aren't being met in a way that we want and expect them to be. Okay, and I, I understand the frustration of that. That can be really, really hard. Can you ask for help? Of course. Can you try to encourage other family members or roommates to be on board? You bet. You totally can. But you can also rely on yourself to show up for yourself and to celebrate your wins. We live in a society in general that discourages us from tooting our own horn and I seriously just want to push back against that in all the ways. Okay. Like, you know, we kind of grow up with this message that, you know, if it came easy to us, it's not worth celebrating. If we didn't work hard enough, it's not worth celebrating. If you only did a portion of a space and you didn't complete the whole room, it's not worth celebrating. Or somebody else has it harder than you do, or they did it quicker. So yours isn't worth celebrating. And I just... That's just a big no. I just want to, I want to let go of all of that. Okay. Um, is your kitchen in chaos, but your sink is empty because you've been conquering and defending it this week? That's amazing. You get to celebrate that. Do you have piles of stuff in the family room, but you managed to fold a load of laundry that have been sitting on the couch for like three days? That is totally worth a happy dance. Did you find the top of your dining room table, even though there's still stuff around it or on the floor? That's absolutely a win, okay? And here's the reason why I'm picking these specific examples, because that was me, right? When I first started my decluttering journey, long before I became a coach, I was a student. I am not a naturally organized person, right? I will always have to deal with clutter, but my house is loads better than it used to be. Now I've made intentional choices and decisions that serve me better, that help me conquer and defend on a regular basis so that I don't lose my house to the point that I've lost it in the past, right? Before I had all these skill sets, it was a much bigger struggle than it is now. Um, I learned that I need to be my most enthusiastic and most consistent cheerleader, okay? 
I spent a lot of time waiting for other people to help me, wanting other people to be on board, wanting other people to work as hard as I was working or to be as intentional about their choices as I was or to develop these skill sets that I now had. But we have to remember that everybody's on their own journey. And if you live by yourself, because a lot of my clients do, um, sometimes we think that it's easier for the person that has a spouse or a roommate because they have someone to help them out and they have someone to cheer them on. But decluttering can be a little bit of a lonely game. Sometimes it really is just us. But that doesn't mean that it's impossible to make progress. Okay. So if you are looking for a village to cheer you on, come and join my free Facebook group. Okay, you can find it in the about section. Um, we're in an inspiring and judgment free group. And these are people that are going to be happy to celebrate your wins with you. If you need some more intentional time and some direct coaching, come and join my paid membership. You're more than your stuff, right? Also inspiring, also judgment free. Um, we're a smaller group and the women in my group are 50 plus, right? We have lots of retirees. We have people that are in different transitions in their life. And um, at the end of the day, I think what's most important is that you believe in yourself and you believe in the process and you don't give up before the miracle happens. In the meantime, keep doing the next right thing, next right thing. I'll see you next week.